Good morning. Welcome to Good Shepherd Free Lutheran Church. A special welcome to all our visitors this morning. We're glad you are here to worship the Lord with us on this first Sunday after Christmas. We're still celebrating Christmas, and we carry that into the new year as well. Uh, I want to mention a few announcements here, if you turn to that page. Uh, This Monday, tomorrow, the youth have a lock-in. Pray for Mark Olson. Uh, Pastor Mark is, I think he's kind of nervous. He's not in here, though, to to say for sure, but uh, Deb, is he nervous? (laughs) Oh, Deb's not going to be there. But pray for, seriously, pray for Mark, Pastor Mark. Um, That lock-in begins at 7 p.m., and it goes through the night until all morning the next day, uh, Tuesday, New Year's Day, uh, but you will need to pick up your kids at about 1 p.m., so uh, hopefully the kids have that on their calendar. Uh, This week, a a little bit more normal of a week, but still a few things that we don't have. No women's Bible study Wednesday, uh, that afternoon Bible study, no no Bible study, and then also no adult Bible study uh, that evening or kids light. This is just one more week of uh, taking that off because of the holidays. Uh, But we do still have confirmation uh, and youth group and choir uh, at 8 p.m. So take note of those things. Also, looking into uh, the future a little bit here, uh, we have an insert for side-by-side and snow days. Take a look at that if your child is interested in that. Uh, Plus, there are plenty of other uh, announcements you can take note of on there as well. Uh, And also in January, uh, coming up shortly, January 23rd, we have our Women's Community Soup Luncheon. And something new this year, there's a... Uh, kind of a seminar on Genesis from a speaker that will be coming in. Um, you can, if you have any questions on that, you can talk to myself or Glenn or uh, Nathan Nimola. Uh, that will be on January 26th, and I, I believe he will be having some, uh, some time on Sunday morning as well to share with us. Uh, so uh, we're, we look forward to that. Uh, I forgot to mention, there's also a chili feed going on at the same time as that seminar, too. I think that is all I'm going to mention. Make sure to look for yourself at the other announcements so you're not missing anything. At this time, let's stand and sing our opening hymn number 22 in the blue hymnal.
You may be seated. We come to the time of our service to share prayer requests with one another. Is there anything that I can add to my list this morning? Kenny. I'll do that, yes. Pray for all those in the children's hospital. Dave? Yeah, I was, I was going to... I was wondering if you could say a prayer for all our military men and women. Definitely. Yeah, we will pray for the military, uh, the men and women serving in our armed forces. Anything else we can add? Doug, persecution, persecuted church. Anything else we can add to our list today? Yeah. Yes, definitely. Pray for safe travels for all those who are coming back or, or leaving on uh, trips. Frida. Pray for our president and all the other uh, leaders of our country. All right. Anything else? All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, sorry, Deb. Thankfulness to God. Faithfulness to all his promises. Definitely. So thanking God that he is faithful. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, the opportunity that we get to gather before you, Lord, as a body of believers, as those who are trusting in you for salvation. Lord, we we look to you, we look to your word and your sacraments, Lord, and we look to uh, each other as brothers to encourage one another and, and, and lift each other up to bear one another's burdens as you call us to do. Lord, we thank you for this privilege that we have uh, to come to you in prayer as well. Lord, to share these things that are on our hearts and minds. And Lord, we pray that you would uh, be with our military, the men and women who serve, Lord, uh, either here at home or or overseas. Lord, some of them are are just simply stationed, but some are also in harm's way actively too, Lord. We just pray that you would uh, be with each one, that they would know you, Lord, in the peace that you give knowing that you have won the victory for them, Lord. Be with them, uh, be with their families as well as they miss them. I I pray especially for um, uh, Pastor Brad Novacek down in Casson, Minnesota, one of our AFLC pastors who was deployed uh, uh, over the summer, I think it was. And uh, we pray for his family too as they are missing him and the congregation too as they uh, they miss uh, Brad. Lord, we pray for our president, and the leaders of our country, Lord. We pray that you would give them wisdom, Lord, to uh, rule, Lord, in a a God-honoring way. Lord, that they themselves would be looking to you for their strength uh, day by day, Lord, that they would um, know you and your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that they would um, make decisions, Lord, according to your word. Lord, as we know, that's where true wisdom comes from. Lord, we pray for our the brothers and sisters around the world who are being persecuted for their faith. Lord, uh, not all have the privilege of living in a, a free country like we do. And Lord, help us to remember them, Lord, to, to bear them up in our, our hearts, in our minds, Lord, in our prayer life, that they might be strengthened because of, of you. That they might look to your word for their assurance and their, their testimony of, of faith, too, Lord, that they would witness to those who are persecuting them, and that uh, we know from Scripture how you turned even Paul, one of the persecutors of the church, towards you, Lord, and used him in a mighty way. So, Lord, we pray the same for them, uh, the persecuted church, and their witness. Lord, we pray as well for all the, the children in the children's hospital. We pray that you would uh, be with them, Lord, uh, as they are there, be with their families. Many of them have uh, terrible, terrible diseases and and cancer and other things like that. 
Lord, that um, so much of what medical uh, technology can do, Lord, is it, it's just not enough, Lord. And we know that you are the great healer, that you are the one who can heal. And we pray that, Lord, if that's your will, that you would heal the, those children. But, Lord, also we know that you give grace that is sufficient for us in this life. And we pray that you would um, use your people, Lord, to come alongside of them and witness to them in, in their time of need. We pray for <clears throat> safe travel <clears throat> as well for all of those who are traveling. Uh, Lord, we, many unpredictable storms can happen. And, uh, Lord, we just pray for safety. We pray for good roads. And we pray for... Um, cars and vehicles that won't um, break down, Lord, that um, whether it's kids going back to school or, or um, just family members returning home, Lord, we pray that you would be with them and, and go with them as they travel. And Lord, we pray for, uh, and we thank you, Lord, for y- your promises, Lord, that you are faithful to your word, that, Lord, you cannot lie, you cannot speak falsely like we do. But, Lord, we can trust in you fully and uh, knowing that your son, Jesus Christ, has fulfilled those promises and continues to fulfill those promises in and through his church. So, Lord, we pray for this day. We pray that you would bless each one here, bless each marriage, bless each child, Lord, and just help everyone, Lord, to see uh, in your word everything that is uh, their food for each day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. At this time, we're going to call upon Aaron Anderson to read our scripture. Please stand. through 3a and 11 through 15. The Lord said to Moses, consecrate to me all the firstborn. Whatever is the first, first to open the womb among the people of Israel, both of man and beast, is mine. Then Moses said to the people, when the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, as he swore to you and your fathers, and shall give, give it to you, you shall set apart to the Lord all that first opens the womb. All the firstborn of your animals that are males shall be the Lord's. Every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb, or if you will not redeem it, you shall break its neck. Every firstborn of man among your sons you shall redeem. And when in time to come, and when in time to come your son asks you, what does this mean? You shall say to him, by a strong hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of slavery. For when Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, the Lord killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of animals. Therefore I sacrificed to the Lord all the males that first opened the womb, but all the firstborn of my sons I redeem. The second reading is found in Luke 2, verses 22 through 40. Luke 2, verses 22 through 40. And when the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples. A light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them, and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own 
through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there is a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Here ends the reading. Please remain standing as we confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. And if you'd like to read that, uh, it's on page 105 of the Blue Hymnal. Let's confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we'll call upon our ushers to receive our tithes and offering. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are so good to us each and every day, each and every morning when we wake up. Lord, we count our blessings. And so, Lord, we want to give back to you now, Lord, from what you've entrusted to us. Lord, that these gifts would be given in your name, Lord, and to be used for your purposes. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Please stand as I read from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. That's Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. Reading in Jesus' name. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We pray now that you would sanctify us in this truth that we hear this morning. We pray, Lord, that you would convict us of sin and bring us to repentance, but also strengthen our faith with your gospel. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. We have many different types of clothes. You probably put on special clothes for church. I know I do. When you go to the Vikings game, you probably put on a Vikings or Bears jersey, depending, <laughs> depending whether you are wise or not. <laughs> Maybe that was a little strong. You, it, when you go to a funeral, you put on nice clothes, funeral clothes you might say. When you paint For instance, we painted our shed this summer, this fall. Well, it was getting close to winter, actually, by the time we got around to that. You put on your painting clothes, right? The stained, already have paint on them. But the clothes you put on every day are probably the most important. Right? Hopefully, you change clothes regularly. Unless you're a teenage boy, that's probably not the case. (laughs) Or, Or that probably is the case, I should say. But putting on clothes, that's something that we do every day. We get dressed. So we're going to look at that that theme a little bit today from our text. We're going to look at first, though, the, the clothes that we wear. Now, by nature, we've been clothed in old, filthy rags. From the moment of our conception, we've been wrapped in these clothes. And by nature, then, we choose rebellion and war with God. We dress ourselves in death and unbelief by nature. And God is rightly, it's right for God to be angry with with us when this is the case. See, the garments that we wear are sin and death. Our souls, our very souls have been corrupted and there's absolutely nothing we can do about it. No self-help book will be of help to us. Our hearts and minds prove it. The things we say, the things we do, show us that our souls have been corrupted. But not only do we, not only are we dressed or clothed by nature, but we clothe ourselves inadequately as well. 
We know that the wages of sin is death. Therefore, death is what we earn by our sin and unbelief. There is no merit or, or worthiness in us to earn salvation. In fact, if we look closely enough, we find that, like Adam and Eve, we have no clothes at all. And yet we try to cover ourselves like Adam and Eve. Right? If you read in Genesis chapter 3, it says that they made for themselves uh, clothing out of fig leaves that they sewed together as they hid among the trees. See, just like Adam and Eve, we, by nature, try to make our own clothes. We try to cover ourselves up by what we do or uh, trying to be good. But that is inadequate. See, from what Paul says in our text today, and even, even before this, actually, in the previous verses... He tells us that we clothe, we clothe ourselves in vice, in evil, in wickedness. By the things that we say, we show the anger on our face. We clench our teeth. We clench our fists. We have malice and wrath and slander within our hearts toward other people. We plot revenge. From our tongues and our lips come obscene talk. And lying. Earlier in, in chapter 3, Paul talks about sexual immorality and impurity, passion and evil desire, and covetousness. These are things that, that come from Satan. He is the source of these things, but now they are ingrained into who we are too. In verse 6 of chapter 3, if you, if you look back there, you'll see what the result of this is. Right? The wrath of God is coming against all of these things. What Paul is telling us is hell awaits the one who clothes themselves in sin, in unbelief. For the one who doesn't heed God's warning, his word, there is eternal punishment. Now, I don't know who, uh, who could relate to this, probably all of you, but... Hannah, my five-year-old, loves to dress herself. She loves to, if you've seen her this morning, you'll see just how good she is at that. Uh, she likes to dress, but she doesn't have any concern whether she matches or not. I think she has blue socks on, an orange and white shirt. How, what color is your skirt, Hannah? Is it pink? Yeah. And they're sparkly and polka dotted and striped or whatever. It doesn't matter. She mismatches and she clashes, but she doesn't care. And that's fine for a five-year-old, right? If I dressed like that, if I would have wore a bear's tie and a Viking's hat or something, that would clash for sure. <laughs> so what I'm trying to get at here is that our, we know that our clothes don't match as Christians. We've looked in the Word of God, and often we find that our actions and our words don't match what we say we believe in. They don't match with our confession of faith. And sometimes, if we're honest, we like to just we we like wearing old rags, right? It's they're they're comfy. It's just too much work to put on different clothes. Too much effort. It's easier just to look out for ourselves and our own, our own comfort rather than, we look, rather than looking out for other people and what they need. And so we simply just choose to treat others poorly, even the ones who are closest to us, our family, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Sometimes we are prideful and we look out for ourselves. Sometimes we're harsh and what we say to other people. Sometimes we are just simply merciless, have no pity whatsoever. Or we're impatient. I know that's one that I struggle with often. We're impatient with other sinners who are just as sinful as we are. And sometimes, if we're not careful, we can fall into the, the pattern of hating somebody 
and the pattern of unforgiveness. And these are things that Paul tells us to put off, to take off. Or he says in another way, put them to death. Right? Put to death what is earthly in you, he says. And so as Christians, hopefully you know that we do fall short. And we're the only ones to blame for our, our sin. We know our sin. We know our guilt and shame. But there's good news. There's good news, especially this time of year at Christmas. Because Christ came and he clothed himself in flesh. We might say from, from, first, uh, from John chapter 1.14, it says the word became flesh. We might say the word dressed in flesh and made it his permanent garment. He put on our nature. He became a human being. This was necessary. He came to us and he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. And for the first time since Adam and Eve, humanity once again was donning the holiness of God. This was the firstborn son of God, but also the lamb of God that would offer himself up as a sacrifice for our sin. See, Jesus dressed in our flesh so that we might be dressed in his holiness. The word dressed in flesh. And he is love, right? Paul talks here in our text for this morning, put on love. Well, for Jesus, that wasn't necessary because he was love. He, God is love. He didn't have to put it on. It was in his very nature. He had a compassionate heart to the people around him, to the those suffering, to those in distress. And he was kind and he was gentle. And it showed on his face. And people were attracted to that gentleness. And he humbled himself. He was meek and mild. And when others would see meekness and, and mildness as a weakness, right, as so many of the Pharisees did, because he associated with lowly sinners, well, Jesus was not afraid to associate with lowly sinners. He was meek in that way. And he was patient with sinners. And he continues to be patient with us. He bears with us. See, Jesus was the perfect example of love. When Jesus came, he was dressed for action. This was God's righteousness come to earth. And it was his love that compelled him to do the very best for us. He was to be a substitute for us, to die the death that we deserved. And we see this at the cross, as Jesus silently endured the shame of being stripped naked, of being beaten and spit on, enduring the anger and hatred and malice of mankind, the hatred for God himself. And Jesus at the cross clothed himself in his own blood. And he did so to cover our sin. To, as he did so, he wore the sin of humanity upon him. And he bared the guilt of your sin and my sin. And by doing that, he provides for us now our eternal attire. As we are now, as believers in God's favor. So Jesus has provided our clothes for us. It's an accomplished thing. And yet Paul here tells us and instructs us to put on, to put on, to get dressed, the clothes that we are given. Right? We've been given new spotless garments to wear. And this is the basis for the command to do this. If he would if Jesus hadn't done anything and then Paul come, comes and tells us to get dressed in this way, we wouldn't be able to. 
But the basis for the command is the fact that Jesus died and rose again. And in Colossians chapter 2, Paul is building this up. He's talking about baptism and how that relates to our lives as sinners and saints at the same time. In baptism, our old nature died. And we were given faith. In baptism, we are cleansed with the blood of Jesus. In baptism, we are delivered from sin and death. And we're given the righteousness of Jesus. We might say that we put on Christ in baptism. And now we belong to God, holy and chosen and beloved. See, in in saving us, Jesus came and outfitted us with what we needed to obey him, to do his will. We, We were given a new nature. Now we don't just have an old nature. We have a new nature where the Holy Spirit comes into us, gives us faith, and renews the image of God within us. See, he's restoring us, sanctifying us. And in this command to put on these virtues, Paul is encouraging us to daily put to death the old nature within us, to repent of our sins. But then he's also encouraging us to be daily renewed in faith as well, through the word of God, through trusting in what Jesus says. This strengthens us. This is the pattern that that God sets for us, just like we have the pattern of putting new clothes on each day. It's the Holy Spirit living within us, even as a church body, as a congregation, that gives us all that we need. See, to live as a body of believers, we need to be continually growing and and living in faith. We need to be Living in unity, as Paul says here. How? By loving one another. Right? He says, love which binds everything together in perfect harmony. As a body, love is like the ligaments of the body that holds the bones together. Love is like the blood that pumps, or the, the heart that pumps the blood. Love is like the muscles that drive us into action. Love is everything to the body of Christ. It's what compels us to do the mission that God has given us. And so there's one sense where Christ has dressed us richly. It's an accomplished reality for us all. But there's also an aspect where it's an ongoing reality too. Something we need to take up each day. Right? In these virtues that Paul gives us from Colossians chapter 3, these are things that flow from faith in Christ, from trusting in him. It's actually Christ working through us. It's God's work. Because he knows that we won't, as sinners, get along all the time perfectly. It's just not the case. We'll say things will do things that hurt other people. But we are called to strive to live the way God wants us to, to put our faith into action, to be merciful, to be kind and gentle and patient with one another. See, forgiveness is also a key to keeping harmony within the body of Christ. Overlooking things that were done to us, forgiving and forgetting the hurts done to us, just like Christ did for us. These are the virtues that help us maintain peace within the congregation. The peace of Christ is to be the the referee, you might say, in the disputes that we have. While we as sinners will all have our own desires and ways of thinking, we should be looking out for the welfare of our brothers and sisters. We should be doing everything to promote peace, to let peace rule in our hearts. That is what is to calm the the disputes in the congregation. And so we let 
God's love for us drive us. We let thankfulness for what he's done for us drive us. And to remember that God calls us all to peace. That just as he has had unconditional love for us, we too are to have unconditional love for each other. And so as Christians, we know, we know that our, work, our clothes are provided. The word tells us this. We know we are forgiven when we repent. We know that these things that Paul talks about, these virtues, are to be distinguishing marks of the Christian. And yet, we also know, even though we are to never to take off these clothes, or there to be a permanent clothing for us, that sometimes we're going to clash like a five-year-old who's trying to dress themselves. And we're going to need to return again and again and again to the grace of God, to ask his forgiveness so that we can serve God and our neighbor once again. See, God gives us everything that we need, his word, his sacraments, baptism, and the Lord's Supper. He gives us the opportunity to gather and worship, to pray together, to fellowship with one another. He gives us teachers to nourish us with the word of God. God gives us everything we need to be dressed the way he wants us to be. He gives us everything we need to be ready for action. And it wasn't just at the cross either. It was at the empty tomb when Jesus rose again from the grave. Because in baptism, we're told that we were raised with Christ as well. See, just as Jesus left behind those grave clothes, in baptism and in faith in Christ, we leave behind those fig leaves and we put on Christ. And he sets us free to live as his representatives on this planet. And so we are the body of Christ. So let us strive to clothe ourselves with Christ likeness. To do everything in word or deed in the name of Jesus Christ, who loves us and who saved us. And remember the hope that we have, too, that one day we will put on new heavenly bodies. That, that God has given us. But in the meantime, as we live here, Paul encourages us to get dressed, to be ready. And so let's do that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the basis of our salvation, Lord, that you came, that you sent Jesus to bear our sins on the cross. Lord, in his grace and love and mercy and forgiveness, he has given us all we need. So help us, Lord, help us to be faithful to our calling, to share with others the good news, to treat each other, whether fellow believer or not, with dignity and and to not let our old nature crowd those things out, Lord. Help us to be kind and patient and loving. Lord, Without you, we couldn't do this. So please, Lord, with your Holy Spirit, help us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing our closing hymn, number 557 in the Blue Hymnal.
Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.